This morning, I want to spend a few minutes talking about an upcoming date that has an intoxicating significance. Yes, we're talking about April 20th, also known as 420, as an unofficial holiday for people who use cannabis. While it's a time for many people to celebrate, some legally, here in Texas, it's illegal. This morning, law enforcement agencies across the state are reminding folks of the risks and consequences associated with partaking. Harris County Sheriff's Office is ramping up efforts to combat impaired driving. Sergeant Latham and Community Traffic Safety Initiatives Liaison Tess Rowland, both with Harris County Sheriff's Office, are here this morning to continue this conversation. Thank you both for coming in. This is a very important conversation to have in the days leading up to 420. Uh, while a lot of folks think that this is a time to celebrate, it's a day that has significant consequences for so many. Absolutely. Uh, where, where do we start when we talk about the risks, the consequences associated with impaired driving? Well, first of all, uh, the research shows us that if, if a person even consumes just a minor amount of cannabis, mm -hmm. that they're actually, the chances of them being involved in a crash double. And if they consume a larger amount of cannabis, that risk actually increased to a triple the, the amount of uh, possible uh, involvement in a crash. So that's pretty significant. Yeah, very significant. Uh, when deputies are patrolling the streets, what are the signs of impairment law enforcement officers look for? So for cannabis, detection? Yep, cannabis will uh, affect your cognitive function. So we're looking for speeding. Uh, mm -hmm. You're unable to um, recognize like depth perception. So we'll also, uh, you're more likely to run stop signs, run red lights, things of that nature. And you're going to have a harder time maintaining your lane. So oftentimes you will fail to maintain your lane and leave the roadway or weave within your lane. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for all of those things. All of those things, all of the above. Uh, Tess, what are the Harris County Sheriff's Office's ongoing initiatives to address impaired driving? This really takes a community. Yes, yes, it does. It takes all of us to prevent impaired driving, and the Harris County Sheriff's Office wants the public to know that impaired driving will not be tolerated. So we've started weekly traffic enforcement initiatives throughout each of our districts, targeting these hotspot areas. We're looking for these aggressive driving behaviors, mm -hmm. and we're also going to be reigniting our regional law enforcement uh, t DUI task force. So that's compi comprised of over 10 agencies. And again, we're targeting these aggressive driving behaviors to remove impaired drivers off the road. And we want everyone to know to always make a plan and of course never take to the roads yeah. if you are intoxicated. Always plan ahead for that ride share. This is a weekly effort. Uh, is it happening at all hours of the day, not just in evening hours? So uh, our officers pick a certain shift and okay. then they go to one of our districts. And again, it's all data driven so we're looking for these hot spot areas and then monthly we reignite our regional task force and again that's comprised of over 10 law enforcement agencies so again a full force effort because unfortunately Harris County has led the nation in impaired driving fatalities and we want folks to know that this will not be tolerated this is not an accident this is not a mistake this is a 100 yeah. percent preventable crime it's a choice yes it's a choice people make uh, are these efforts visible to the community can people see the these initiatives taking shape. Yes, yes, You'll, you will see increased presence. Again, um, we'll see if we're in your district. Um, uh, but of course, we want to encourage people to, again, uh, abide by all traffic laws. And again, we're, we're working to increase enforcement to reduce these fatal crashes. Sergeant Latham, explain the legal consequences here if someone makes the choice to get behind the wheel impaired. Oh yeah, there are there are several consequences that uh, the estimated cost that hits your pocketbook whenever you are arrested for driving while intoxicated is between ten and fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that's just on your break first. break the bank, yeah. Yes, and that's just on your first arrest, and of course uh, every subsequent arrest after that it just becomes more costly. In addition to that, there are several. Um, there are, are several um, jobs that will not hire you if you've ever been arrested for a DWI. Uh, and so that can prevent you from, not only are you gonna have these legal issues in the criminal justice system, but it could affect your, your work later on down the line. Yeah, absolutely. And not to mention the, the, the loss it could, it could cast upon any sort of family member. Um, you know, the, the, to me, the loss is just 
astronomical here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're talking about legal consequences, but also the loss associated with any sort of choice like this could be detrimental. Yeah, we have a problem in Harris County with fatal crashes, mm -hmm. and about half of them involve an impaired driver. So uh, the worst thing that you could do is get behind the wheel impaired and then go up the road and kill yourself or someone else. It has just a, a great lifelong mm -hmm. Uh, impact on, yeah. on families. Yeah, yeah, really heartbreaking. Anything else you want the public to know about this ongoing effort when it comes to, you know, cracking down on impaired driving? Again, it's a choice, like you said earlier, mm -hmm. so we want to encourage folks to, of course, make a plan, make the right reserve choice. the yeah. ride in advance to ensure that you're never in that position. Again, cannabis use is illegal in the state of Texas, but even if a drug is legal and mm -hmm. prescribed to you, it is also illegal to, to drive impaired. So yeah. if you feel different you drive different so definitely take initiative of that as well and we're working to reduce the number of crashes 700 crashes last year um, involved an impaired driver so just astronomical and again it is 100% preventable yeah. so you know I think this is a really unique conversation because so often when we host these types of dialogues the focus on impaired driving is typically alcohol. It's it's not often talked about uh, when we include cannabis. And so it's really interesting and it's a good reminder to, to let people know that this is impaired driving. This is not just alcohol. It's other drugs as well. Any other drug or influence that could impair that ability to drive is what we're talking about this morning. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, we appreciate you both stopping by and having this important conversation with us.